Hey guys, here's a good story about uh, when me and my cousin stole a pig. So I was living with my cousins in rural Ohio, right? And um, me and me and one of my cousins, we hung out a lot and got high and drank a lot, and you know. And so across the street was this farm. And one year they got a bunch of pigs. They had a big barn. It was full of pigs, and we would actually go over there and mess with the pigs, you know, and run around and. So me and her, we were all messed up one night and came up with this theory and this idea of what we were going to do is we were going to steal one of them pigs. And we were going to take it. There was this abandoned lot uh, in, in the middle of the woods up the road from us and there was a shed there which would be a perfect sized barn. And we were going to keep that pig in that little shed and raise it until it was really big. And then we were going to take it to the fair and sell them and make money from selling this pig. Right? So that was our scheme. <laughs> so. <clears throat> How do you get the pig up the road, up the gravel road, incidentally, right? So what we did, somewhere along the way, we had acquired this wooden stop sign. And I had a live trap. If you follow my videos, it's just like the live trap that I caught our cat Ollie in when he got lost. It was just like that. So, we had these old bicycle wheels that didn't have tires. So, using those three things, we constructed a cart that we would pull with a rope, okay? <laughs> So, what we did was we went over across the street in the middle of the night, most likely high, obviously, and uh, we rigged that cart up with the trap secured to it. And the trap was going to be a cage to put the pig in. They were small pigs, you know what I mean? They were piglets, you know? small by pig standards. So, we opened the gate just to crack and put that trap there. Her job was to stay in guard by that trap and make sure that any pig I chased out that gate would run into the trap and we would capture him, right? So, I get in this barn and start chasing these pigs, trying to rustle one of them towards that gate. The first one <laughs> that ran through that gate <laughs> jumped right over the trap and ran off into the night, right? So, we're like, fuck, fuck. So, the second one managed to run into the trap and we slammed the door. So, we caught our pig. So, we closed the gate and we started hauling that rickety-ass homemade cart up the gravel road with the rope. I was pulling it with the rope over my shoulder. Now, I don't care how small the pig is to fit in that little cage, but while it's bucking and jumping around, it weighs a lot. I'd say the thing easily weighed 60 or 70 pounds just sitting still, right? And she was pushing the cart from behind because I couldn't handle it. Now, these bicycle wheels without tires that we had secured to this stop sign, we nailed big long nails through the hub into the wooden stop sign. Those were the axles of this rickety-ass stop sign cart that we're hauling up the gravel road. It was damn near a mile. So the, the wheels are all bowing like this. I don't even know how we made it, but we did. We managed to get up there, and then there's like this little grass trail leading back to that barn. And we actually managed to get this pig up there. <coughs> and we used these pallets and nailed them to the front of the shed. And that was going to be our pig pen. And then we also went to the same farm's fields and picked a bunch of ears of corn. And there was some buckets in that place, and we hauled buckets full of corn up there to feed our pig. Right? Now, the hard work. I can't even believe we pulled it off. But the next day, I had a job opportunity with some friends of mine down in southern Ohio, which, by relation, you don't know, but it was about an hour and a half drive away. So they came and got me and took me. We were junking some engines from cars. Now, while I was gone, the pig escaped. And... I don't know how, but the farmer found out that the pig was up there. I don't know if maybe the pig was running around in the field, or I mean in the woods. He was in, actually in the woods. I don't know if he was running around in the woods and somebody reported it and said, hey, I think one of your pigs is out here. I don't know. But, because I wasn't here or there, like I said, when it happened. But um, somehow they had determined that my cousins are the ones that stole the pig. Now, the one was with me, but her brother was not. But he still got drafted to go help him catch this pig that was running through the woods and from what I hear it was a hell of a hell of a chase the pig would run from them them and the farmer and the pig would run from them and get up ahead out of reach and just collapse and heave because it was out of breath and apparently it had grown massive just in a span of a couple of days right and uh, so eventually they caught the pig and um, they got in trouble for it I didn't because I wasn't there and so they kind of held out against me for a little while and we didn't get our pig 
to race for the fair, which was actually kind of a silly idea because, to be honest, I think you have to have some kind of documentation to sell a pig at the fair. You can't just show up with some pig. And anyway, so what are we going to do? We're going to raise this pig all summer long until it's a massive hog. And then how are we going to get it? We're going to haul it all the way to the fair on a stop sign for car, you know what I mean? So, yeah, we didn't put a lot of thought into it, but, uh, and maybe that's why it didn't work out, but that's the story about how me and my cousin stole a pig and it just didn't work out. So I'm going to head out, take it easy.